Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. And thank you all for tuning in this evening. This is a real treat. And uh, something very exciting for me, this is a first time trying a live stream from home. Uh, but I'm very excited to be playing an organ recital in Galway Cathedral next week. So thank you all for joining me. This is a playthrough of the music. Uh, it's some of my absolute favorite pieces of organ music, and I hope that you will enjoy them as well. I'm just keeping an eye on things as we get started. Uh, I will try and keep an eye on chat and whatnot, and certainly if there's any issues with audio and otherwise, please let me know. But without further ado, let's launch into the first program, or the first piece on the program.
Well, I hope that sounded okay. <laughs> I'm seeing some thumbs up here, so thank you very much. <clears throat> so absolutely one of my all-time favorite pieces of organ music to play and to listen to. Um, so of course, that was um, Alfred Holland's Concert Overture in C minor. Uh, he really knew how to write a good tune, did he not? Absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, so that was the organ of Billerbeck Cathedral, sampled by Sonus Paradisi. And <clears throat> I've been practicing on organs with uh, large acoustic. As I mentioned, I'm very excited and looking forward to playing at Galway Cathedral. Uh, this is a shot from outside. So uh, this will be me uh, next week. So very excited to return home. Uh, this is a view of inside, so if anybody has not been there, it's an absolutely magnificent space. Uh, this was my first cathedral, and I have very fond memories as a child uh, attending uh, some of the novenas here with family and hearing the great organ and being introduced to wonderful hymn tunes and whatnot. So this is where church music and organ music really began for me, so it's an absolute privilege to be returning. Uh, this is a view uh, of the organ. Uh, built in uh, the 1960s by Rushworth and Dreeper, and uh, most recently underwent a significant rebuild, expansion, renovation by Trevor Crow in Ireland uh, between 2006 and 2007. Uh, so it's a symphonic instrument, and I think it's going to do really well. I, I've really tried to choose music that is not only enjoyable to play and listen to, but I think is going to work really, really well on this instrument. So here is a plug for me, uh, for any of my viewers or friends who may be in Ireland Thursday, July 27th at 8 p.m. Uh, the Galway Cathedral Organ Recital is, series is fantastic. And I do also want to give a shout out to my friend Mark Keane, who will be playing there this coming Thursday. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss that recital. I won't be home in time for that. Uh, but I am looking forward to hearing him play in Dublin at the Dunleary organ recital uh, later in the week. Uh, so I will be in Galway Cathedral playing this music on Thursday uh, 27th. And um, <clears throat> as I'm just waiting for the next organ to uh, load up here in the background, um, we're going to move on to listen to some Charles Marie Vidor. Uh, so the organ of Galway Cathedral uh, really has some fantastic French voices and it has an absolutely wonderful harmonic flute and uh, as I enjoyed uh, Vidor's symphonies growing up uh, the eighth symphony second movement in particular uh, really appealed to me uh, it's amazing how with very little registration change just using the character of the harmonic flute uh, it's uh, he conveys so much emotion uh, so what's going on here in the background, uh, uh, those of you who have Hauptwerk, and I know many of the friends watching here have, uh, know that this is taking a moment to cook in the background, but Nancy Cathedral is uh, in the process of uh, loading up and should be here any moment and we will continue. Just taking a moment to uh, see who's here in the chat. Thank you all for tuning in. I see so many friends from the online world um, and quite a number of professionals in the organ performance and streaming world. So uh, no pressure me, right? <laughs> but uh, thank you all for, uh, for joining in. Um, I would also say, uh, if you're watching this on Catch Up, please drop a comment. Um, not only is this a wonderful opportunity for me to play through this recital for you all, um, but certainly if you have thoughts, ideas, suggestions, I would love to hear them. Uh, that's one of the joys of interacting with uh, friends all around the world is that we get to hear so many uh, different opinions and whatnot. Uh, so uh, certainly if there's any thoughts that you have, uh, please, uh, please share. Um, I see there, uh, Richard, never heard of Hauptwerk? I know, right? It's, <laughs> it's a mystery. Anyhow, we're at 92% here, so we're just about ready. So let me get my next score up. Uh, so this is uh, going to be uh, the second movement from the Eighth Symphony by Charles Marie Vidor from Nazi. So I hope you enjoy.
Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I hope you enjoyed that. Um, <clears throat> absolutely wonderful music. Uh, so just getting my next one loaded up here. Uh, so as I said, that is just a piece which really speaks to me. Uh, just wonderful flowing melodies, and it's amazing how much emotion is in the different ranges of the harmonic flute. Uh, it sounds completely different in the tenor range versus the soprano range, and he really uh, takes full advantage uh, of that in that writing. So, where to next? Uh, we are going to uh, hear some uh, Dubois, and uh, specifically his Fiat Lux, or Let There Be Light. Uh, this is another wonderful piece uh, which I relatively recently discovered and I think is going to work really well in Galway Cathedral. It's a piece of music that works really well in a reverberant acoustic. And with that in mind, um, I have chosen to play this. You can just about see it in the background, but we are on our way to Blackburn. And I think I saw uh, John Hosking there in the chat. So uh, Blackburn Cathedral really has all of the sounds to really make this piece shine. Uh, it's just a, uh, it describes the, essentially the moment of creation. And uh, we're listening to complete silence transformed from the very softer stops let there be light is spoken into the silence. And then there's just this wonderful, cre uh, wonderful uh, crescendo from beginning all the way to the end. So uh, for those of you with uh, headphones and whatnot, just beware. Uh, this is going to start out very, very quiet. And it's going to go all the way to our festival trumpet uh, uh, at the very, very end. So uh, we're just about ready to go here. So without further ado, uh, here is... Uh, Theodore Dubois.
Well, I hope that was okay for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just checking here. Uh, do let me know how the audio is. Uh, I see some indications that uh, we have green lights here, but if anything is going to be a stress test for the system, it is that. What an absolutely incredible organ, and uh, what a fun piece to showcase it as well. Um, <clears throat> so, moving along the program, uh, the next piece that we're going to enjoy, uh, we're starting to move towards uh, pieces that have direct Irish connection um, and uh, music that really speaks to my heart. Uh, so, uh, this next piece uh, is an old Irish air and there are some interesting uh, stories that go behind this. Let me just get that slide up. There we go. Uh, so Joseph Waddell Clokey uh, is a, or was, uh, a famous uh, organist from the United States based in California. And this is connected with Stanford because the melody which he chose to include here uh, was actually preserved by Charles Villiers Stanford as part of a series of melodies from Ireland which were preserved uh, in the Petrie collection. Uh, so this one is The Little Red Lark, or An Fwyn Shogin Darg. Um, and just really briefly, I, when I proposed this program and sent it through to my friends at Golwa Cathedral, uh, one of the longtime patrons mentioned that there is actually a connection between Galway Cathedral and Mr. Clokey. Uh, he has Irish heritage and was tracking down his roots. And apparently, Uncle Joe showed up on the doorstep of the Clokey family uh, in the 50s after he was returning from a organ recital in England. Um, and they saw the family resemblance, and of course, the connection was borne out. Uh, so Clokey stayed in touch. Uh, but it turns out that family uh, was also involved in some of the stained glass in uh, Galway Cathedral. So it really is an amazing small world and how these things are connected. Uh, so, we're going to hear uh, Clokey's uh, arrangement of this beautiful old Irish air. And the next thing, which is uh, interesting related to this, I'm playing this on an American organ. Uh, some of you will have heard me uh, upload recordings from and broadcast. I'm very lucky to live in town here where we have the uh, wonderful Kilgan organ at Second Presbyterian Church in, uh, here in Portsmouth. Uh, it's a beautiful three manual instrument. Uh, built by the Kilgan Company from St. Louis back in the 30s and has all of the wonderful American sounds including strings and flute celestes, a wonderful clarinet, so it's perfect for this. Um, but yes, I am in my living room, of course. Uh, well, I've been learning a little bit more about the innards of Hauptwerk and have sampled uh, the Kilgan and we have been using it during uh, the summer months while Ma Kilgan, as she's referred, is out of commission. Uh, she will be coming home soon, but right now this sample set is being used in the church. So I figured this was a good time to show off what we've done with it, and I think it really works well for this piece. So without further ado, uh, here is uh, an old Irish air.
Isn't that pretty? <clears throat> I hope you enjoy that. An absolutely beautiful, beautiful piece of music. Um, so let me just uh, check one thing here. All right. Um, so <clears throat> anyhow, uh, that is uh, Cloakey's wonderful uh, melody on an old Irish air. So that is going to bring us right up to the grand event this evening and something I've really been uh, looking forward to. Let me just get my little slide deck back here for us. Uh, let's try this one more time. The gremlins are visiting. <laughs> uh, let's see. There we go. And there he is. So we're going to hear uh, Sir Charles Villiers Stanford's Sonata Celtica. Uh, so this is a absolutely fantastic piece. Uh, next year, it turns out, is Stanford's 100th centenary. Uh, so we are, I think, all encouraged to dig into our repertoire and get more familiar with Stanford. Uh, for this, I have chosen to play at Hereford Cathedral. Um, this is a wonderful Father Willis organ, and the way it has been recorded a little bit more close, uh, so we can really hear some of the uh, uh, wonderful uh, melodies and uh, harmony uh, really comes to life on this instrument. I think it uh, has the sounds that he has in mind. Now, Stanford grew up in Dublin and uh, later moved to England uh, in his uh, late teens and 20s and onward and became a very, very important figure uh, in English uh, cathedral music and organ music. However, he always retained close ties to the Irish heritage and frequently found reasons to build in melodies and harmonies from the homeland. I'm gonna mention the three movements of Sonata Celtica, starting with the last movement. Uh, it's entitled St. Patrick's Breastplate, and many of us are familiar with the hymn tune, I bind unto myself today, the strong name of the Trinity. Uh, so that melody is gonna be featured very prominently uh, in this grand finale. Um, the second movement is something of a theme and variations. I kind of think of a woodland scene. He paints lots of different pictures. Uh, really, really uh, wonderful and emotive. And this is a picture of the Cliffs of Moher, which is on the west coast of Ireland. Uh, and this is a, a region that I call home and where I grew up. And while I don't know that this is necessarily what Stanford had in mind, this is definitely what I hear uh, when you hear the opening movement here with all of its crashing chords. Um, so this is a very, very colorful piece. I think the Irish landscape is a very, very colorful place indeed. Um, if you've not visited, you definitely need to. And it's my hope here as we enjoy Sonata Celtico, Celtica uh, that you're going to hear a lot of uh, that uh, language and harmony that's been infused into this uh, wonderful piece of music. So I'm going to play through all movements and we'll touch base briefly on the other side. I hope you enjoy.
Well, there we have it. Stanford's Sonata Celtica. What an amazing piece of music. And uh, yes, I did fumble my pistons and absolutely had to go back and get that tuba. I was saving the tuba for that entry, so uh, taking mental notes for uh, Galway next week. But thank you so much for joining me this evening. And you guys are all so kind. Uh, thank you for the kind words and applause here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, but we live in amazing times that we can share music all over the world from our living rooms like this. Uh, so thank you to the pioneers uh, who are online with us here who have uh, basically laid the groundwork so that uh, the rest of us can enjoy this. But thank you so much. Uh, and again, I'm very much looking forward to playing in Galway Cathedral next week. And of course, I will be seeing you guys all around online in all of the usual places. So with that, I'm going to say good night from Portsmouth, Ohio. And uh, perhaps next time I'll tune into a live stream from Ireland. Good night, everybody. Have a good one. <laughs>